Wikidata for Data Journalists by Elisabeth Gisemann. So, our agenda for today is that we will ha have a look on key points of data journalism. We will quickly explain what Wikidata is, what tools you can use inside of Wikidata for data visualization, what other third-party tools are there for your research. Then we have a look at critical research done with Wikidata. And finally, we have a critical look on the data of Wikidata itself. Key points of data journalism are that you want to interview a data set. So you want to find connections, correlations and causalities behind the data. Also, you want to visualize the data in a compelling way. And you want to write your own story. You want to find a new spin and a new look on, at the facts. And all of these things you can do with Wikidata. At Wikimedia Deutschland, we want to support evidence-based reporting. That's why we want to support you in using Wikidata. Also, data journalism helps you to tailor your story to the users or your readers. Data journalism helps you to create visual storytelling instead of walls of text. And this, again, helps you to convey uh, facts faster and way more easy, and that makes your story way more inclusive. So how do you get to a story with Wikidata? You want to find and recognize patterns in a data set. You can search for geographical data. You can search for similarities and differences in the data. And you can also search for missing data, because that also exists in Wikidata. You can visualize your findings with the tools that you find in the Wikidata query service. And what's most important is you can connect to the Wikidata community and find people who are working on a similar subject or have a similar research, research question to the one that you have. So I included this visualization to show you that data is only the beginning of your story and the path that you will take. We want you to use the data in Wikidata for, to create a compelling story and therefore contribute value and your idea about what's in the data. Because Data is a lot, but it's not everything. As we've seen in the last months, many people aren't convinced by facts. Also, there's a lack of time and there is a lack of data, li da data literacy in our society. It's not always easy to understand the complexity of historical events and developments, to understand the complexity of medical data or demographic changes. So it is important to have a storytelling aspect to your data, have good visualizations and an easy to understand approach to convey the significance of your data and your story. And finally, it is important to remain transparent and clear about the use and analysis of the data. So what is Wikidata? Wikidata is a free linked database that can be read and edited by both humans and machines. So it is a database of linked open data. It, that means that the data do doesn't just sit there in tables. It can be connected and combined with other data found on Wikidata. As such, it is a realization of the semantic web as uh, dreamt by Tim Berners-Lee, and also uh, it, Wikidata won a prize uh, for its realization of the semantic web. We just celebrated Wikidata's data's eighth birthday, 
It currently holds 90 million items and has 44,000 active users and contributors, which makes it the most edited Wikimedia project. It was uh, initially uh, used to or thought of to support the projects of the other projects of the Wikimedia ecosystem and seen as a central storage for the structured data of uh, the sister projects like Wikivoyage, Wikisource, and the most uh, famous uh, Wikimedia project, Wikipedia. But it also has another function, which means, uh, which is to provide free and open data to the internet. And that became really huge, as already said. Uh, we now have more than 80, uh, 90 million data items on Wikidata. A colleague of mine created this map, and you can see um, here the geolocation data that is in Wikidata. And we are very proud that it's distributed all over the world. But it's also we also take it with a grain of salt, because as you can see, it's very bright in Europe and on the east and west coast of the US, but there are very dark spots where we can't uh, record the knowledge in the same way as we do in our Western societies. And that uh, brings us to the question of what is knowledge equity and how can we actually best serve everybody in our global society. So how does it work? Wikidata holds items, which are real things or concepts in the real world, like Berlin, Barack Obama, Helium. And these items are uh, identified with an ID, the Q ID. So Q76 or Q... I don't, I can't read the number now. <laughs> So these items have labels, descriptions, aliases, and side links. Labels, that means um, it's described in all of the uh, languages that Wikidata holds. Currently, those are around 300. Descriptions are forms to describe what the item holds. And aliases, sometimes one item has several names, etc., etc. An item also has properties. Those are used to label the data, like a person is born somewhere, its date of birth or death, or the location of a specific building. Statements hold information in properties. So P47 shares the border with another, like country or the population. Statements also have qualifiers uh, to expand the information and then also they have references, which is very important because um, for scientific research you want to have those uh, references. So here we see again our item Berlin, Q64. <laughs> um, the property is the population of 3.7 million. So what's new about research with Wikidata is that you can ask your own questions. Before you would go to a library and some the librarians, librarians are awesome, but they would give you books um, with specific facts in them and you would consume them and try to uh, use them for your research. At Wikidata you can ask very specific questions that nobody else came up with before. So for your research you want to do your own Wikidata queries. That's what we have the Wikidata query service for. The good news is that you don't have to learn Python or R or become a data scientist, 
but you want to learn a bit of Sparkle. We included a few resources here in this presentation, and there's also going to be a talk given by my colleague Lucas on the 29th on how to query Wikidata with Sparkle. We also have a, a guided tour on Wikidata on our website, which I can recommend. Okay, so um, as said, once you uh, queried your data, you can visualize your results for more compelling storytelling. And there are several ways of, sh of doing this, and I'm going to show you some of this just to give you an idea. You could, for instance, ask the query service to show you airports uh, that are named after a person and color code them um, according to their gender. Gender of the person, not the airport, obviously. You can ask the query service, show me everything connected to the item Berlin. You can ask uh, it to show you the population of the countries that are bordering Germany and how it developed. You can also ask the query service to show you the most common cause of death uh, among noble people. Or here it shows you uh, an, an historical overview of space probes. Or uh, all of the children and grandchildren of Genghis Khan. So we had a look on the visualizations inside of Wikidata's query service, but um, there are also tools that use Wikidata's data for their own visualizations, and I'm going to show you some of them now. So here is Histropedia, which uh, makes time beams of historical events using data from Wikidata. This is Inventaire. Basically, it lets you um, create your own private library and then uses the data from Wikidata to describe the publications. Here is Ask Me Anything. That's done by different uh, researchers in Europe and it lets you um, pose questions in natural language to Wikidata. So you don't have to use the query service. That's a way that to use Wikidata that's also used by a lot of um, voice assistants like Siri and Alexa. And here you have Scalia, which is basically a platform for uh, scientific publications that are published under open access and collected. And it can um, answer you questions like uh, who published what paper, with whom, who and when, or who wrote the first paper on COVID, when was it published, etc. And here we have uh, some of all paintings. Uh, basically, it's a database that creates all of the paintings in the world and uh, lists their metadata so you can combine it in your own specific way. So I showed you a couple of, of examples what you could do um, and I want to uh, hint at 
other uh, researchers who did uh, great stuff with Wikidata and used it for very cool storytelling. If my slides work, okay, here we go. So, um, women's representation and voice in media coverage of the coronavirus crisis. That's, the, that's a study done by a researcher called Laura Jones uh, regarding the representation of female experts within the coverage of coronavirus. It uses evaluations of Wikipedia and Wikidata uh, to show to show how much uh, representation was there of female experts. Um, and as we see, it's not a lot. Finally, there's another uh, great example I want to tell you about. Um, it's the project called enslaved.org. It's a linked open data platform based on Wikibase, which is the software behind Wikidata. And it basically shows or it collects uh, and connects data related to the transatlantic slave trade. So uh, people who suffered under the slave trade and the records that were done by the people active in, in this slave trade uh, those data is collected. Uh, it has been collected in several databases and enslaved um, built one large database to connect them and uh, rebuild the stories. Which I think it's a really great idea to, or a really great way to humanize people who've been dehumanized with data. Like you can see here, um, they, collect they collect data from newspapers and um, from the slaveholders to recount the story of individuals. So finally, I also want to uh, talk to you about uh, one thing at Wikidata that is always on our minds, which is that uh, Wikidata is not perfect. I highly recommend the talk by Oz Keys, Question in Wikidata, in which it is explained that all classification systems are inherently dangerous. And Wikidata is a large encyclopedic wiki, uh, classification system which makes choices, ethical and political choices, about what is notable, about how to um, categorize information. And these choices, they reduce complexity and they reduce um, also uh, specific forms of, uh, of history, like oral history. This reduction has consequences. Um, as you, you know, Wikidata is used by many um, programs, apps, uh, voice assistants. And what, what and how we store information and Wikidata really matters. So we ask ourselves, what is encyclopedic knowledge and how can we organize it in a w more inclusive way? Encyclopedic knowledge is a Western concept and we can and must do better than just uh, use our own Western view to organize the world. But then also the Wiki principle applies. We have a huge community behind Wikidata that uh, helps us to make this, these decisions. And you can also become a part of this by s researching Wikidata, using it for your work and also contributing your research. 
So once again, I want to tell you, you can use Wikidata as a tool for your storytelling. Wikidata can help you find connections between data. Wikidata can help you find, can help you build visualization in its query service. You can ask questions about historical data correlations more critically than you could uh, than you could before. And but there are also downsides to downsides to Wikidata because it is an encyclopedic way of organizing Western knowledge. So this was only a start. Uh, I'm looking forward to our Q&A session now. And uh, if you have further questions, concerns, or have ideas, you can contact me and my colleagues. And you can also contact me individually. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Elizabeth. Uh, thank you very much for your interesting talk. That was a very great introduction. Hi, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'm happy that I was able to talk a bit about Wikidata and um, how you could do storytelling with it. Um, I wanted to add that obviously you can ask me questions now, um, but also I want to hint at the great introduction of Wikidata that one of my colleagues gave yesterday, two of my colleagues which is already online and tomorrow there will be a query service workshop where you can learn a bit more in depth how to query Wikidata. Yeah, that's a very good hint. There's actually there's two questions in the chat right now. The Great. first one is, are your slides going to be published? Uh, because people are interested in your links to the tutorials, obviously. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, the I, I asked before. Um, I think the talk will be published and the slides. Um, is there a, a Wikipaka board where I can put it? Otherwise, um, I can also put a link on our Twitter account, Wikimedia Deutschland. And yeah. I think Twitter for now would probably be the best idea. I actually have to check on the Wikipaka board. But we will okay. let you know where you can find everything. I put it on the Wikimedia Deutschland Twitter. It's at WMDE, I think. We will also retweet <laughs> it, obviously. You will find it, I promise. OK. There's another question. What resources would you recommend for self-studying the writing of queries for querywiki.org? Mm -hmm. Um, I put some uh, links in the in the slides. Um, there is, yeah, we have like a few tutorials on Wikidata. There was also a couple of months ago a very nice and um, very easy uh, tutorial published by Wikimedia Israel. And I, so we didn't do it, but I can recommend it. It's a very uh, low key um, introduction to your first queries. Okay, we will also publish that somehow. <laughs> um, I have a question for you as well. You mentioned that Wikidata is like a great way for meeting other people that are working on similar topics. So is there some kind of like greater community of journalists using Wikidata? So far, um, the community is mostly research-based. That's also why we wanted to reach out here. Mm -hmm. um, I would recommend getting in touch with uh, the community on there um, regarding the research topics that you have. And you can also get in touch with us and we uh, connect you. I have a noise in my ear, but I hope it's only me. Well, okay. I don't have it, so may it might. Great. Just for um, you, but I feel like there might be also an echo on the stream that let's okay. that's what people on the chat are saying. Oh, okay. So I don't have any other questions in the chat. And since there seems to be an echo on the stream, I don't want to annoy people any further. So I would suggest uh, for everyone who has further questions to you uh, that you can meet in our big blue button meetup room 
that I will be posting in the chat right now. Mm -hmm. um, and we will continue our program here at 2.20 with uh, another talk about Flutter by the one with the braid. So I'm saying bye for now. Thanks, bye. Bye.